Oh, it's beautiful. It's a cold morning, and we're supposed to have a little bit of sprinkle maybe tomorrow or something. They were hoping maybe some today, but it passed us by and went up to Tahoe, but beautiful sunshine. I got a feeling everything's going to bloom again and kind of be too early. What's kind of interesting is that the Lord speaking to me this morning about attitudes and actions and how people are affected by them greatly, especially first thing in the morning. And so he kind of with a sense of humor provoked me into or invoked in me this desire and then provoked me to look at and examine something that I've been wanting to do but haven't really pursued it much because there's such wonderful materials already out there you know a lot of why I've never gone into ministry because I always said hey there's tons of stuff out there that's so good and so wonderful that people just need to use it <laughs> or lose it you know I mean that was the bottom line point because shoot when I grew up we had navigators and we had Bill Bright and we had David Wilkerson and we had Chuck Smith and we had Greg Laurie and we had Mike McIntosh and we had John Corson and we had Chuck Missler and Man, everywhere I turn, Rick Boyer and T. Thornton and Malcolm Wilde and shoot. <laughs> I mean, everywhere I turn, there's people that were like highly qualified, you know, and so much better than I that I kind of went, man, you know, <laughs> I'll never go in ministry. Those guys got it covered. <laughs> Little did I know that God was going to point me or prepare me for ministry in my latter days. And that kind of inspired me today to begin something that God has kind of led me to consider on other areas in video. But what we're doing this morning is, by way of this intro, is we're doing Psalms. It's uh, Countdown Psalms, or Psalms Countdown. And we're going to do a countdown series of studies, you know, in video, because we're going to go from the end to the beginning, not the beginning to the end. We're taking that scripture that says the last shall be first and the first shall be last, but we're going to go backwards, <laughs> so to speak, and kind of look at it and see if maybe we can get something out of it. You know, Maybe we won't. Maybe we will. Maybe it'll be weird. Maybe it won't. But we're going to count down different things. And so if you see the word countdown, then you kind of know it's starting from the end and working its way to the beginning. And that's what we're doing in Psalms this morning is that we're going to begin with Psalm 150 and then every day take a psalm and count down from 150 to 149 to 148. Kind of like counting down towards Jesus coming. You know, and we might, who knows, start with Revelation and count down. But you know what? We might go from the last chapter to the second to last to the third to last and just kind of blow people's minds because, you see, the numbers were added. And although there's breaks for where chapters would be, the numbers weren't really there in the first place. So it might be kind of fun to count down, so to speak, studies in the Word of God. So in Psalms Countdown, we're looking at Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. His mercy endures forever and ever. Oh, sorry, Don. <laughs> Francisco. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a song he sang about, I think, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, not Nebuchadnezzar, about uh, uh, Joshua and marching around uh, the walls of Jericho before they fell down. Jehoshaphat, the good king Jehoshaphat in his day. But praise ye the Lord. I mean, do you? Do I? I would say... We ought to read it once in a while, you know, and instead of just kind of like, you know, look through it, kind of like, do it, you know. Praise Him for His mighty acts. I mean, hasn't He done mighty things for you? Praise Him. 
that would be a good way to start your day. You start your day with kind of like putting, you know, maybe in a poster, you know, how they put those posters together where it says, I am and uh, Jehovah Jireh, God of Provider, and this and that and the other thing. And you had this poster of all these words. What if, now you could take this and run with it, call it a Vidivo original or call it a Michael original thought. Although I think the Holy Spirit really take more credit than I can. But what if you took everything God had done for you and put it into little short statements and made a little poster out of it? Then you could put it on your wall and you could look at it like you look at those ones that say I am and Jesus is and all that stuff. Or do it on Facebook or your favorite social media. Wouldn't that be awesome? You know, like, God healed me. God delivered me from cancer. Or God saved me. And then, you know, maybe God saved me in 1974. And then another line would say, God blessed me with finances, 1982. God did this, 1974 or 6. And so on, you know. Because it would be kind of a way of putting you into remembrance as well as declaring to everyone else around you what God has done. So you would be declaring His mighty works. You see what I mean? Old storytellers, when they were native Indians, would be talking around the fire every night of the events that happened in certain years. And they would remember the years by what the events were that happened. You should be able to do that in your life. Recount for your children, as well as those of strangers and natives around you, of those things that God has done in your life as you recount them. Because that's kind of what Psalms was. Oral history was the way we communicated for centuries before we really wrote things down. And then when people wrote things down, they began to edit them. So it kind of didn't get the same feeling. But when you have someone come up and tell you what they've experienced, like grandparents or people, you know, like when you hear Holocaust stories, you know, and you go, wow, when that survivor tells it, then it's real. Well, that's the way it should be with Jesus. You should be able to tell about what he is doing with you, recounting the mighty acts that he has done. Praise him for those. Rejoice in him. Tell the story. Share your testimony, as it were. So, think about it. I would. You know, it says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the sanctuary and harp, praise him with all these things. Reread 150 and think about it. But also think about this. You can write a song. It don't matter. I mean, if you listen to rap, anybody can write a song. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to kind of blow somebody's mind. But really, you can write a song. You can sing your own song. You can make your own kind of music. You can make it simple to last your whole day long. Don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. Da -da 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 -da. No, but you should. You should, like David, write a song, at least one, of how you feel about God. And you might find some melody or maybe reword, as some people are doing right now. Take your favorite secular song, maybe, and reword it into a Christian song. Why not? We used to do that in the Jesus movement. And make it your song. And then sing it unto the Lord. Today, Countdown Psalms 150. God bless you.